Hello YouTube, Jonathan 800 here. It turns out trying to carry the allies as New Zealand while using only Bob samples is very tough. So I decided to do a request a game of taking on the Axis and Sheep's mod. Late July saw a surprise attack on the US Pacific Fleet which half of it was busy training out of Manila Harbor. Despite having extremely low orc, the Navy fought hard destroying quite a few of the enemy's screens while taking some casualties. After repairs, Marines made a landing on Taiwan, quickly securing the island. Also at this time, strategic bombers were raining bombs on German factories and infrastructure too. How good was it? Uh, it's debatable. The Germans were already dying to a further buff Soviets, and I'm not sure if the bombed out factories did all that much. After securing Okinawa and Iwo Jima, the Marine Corps conducted a landing on Nagasaki. A force attack was used to break the garrison even quicker, but probably wasn't needed. Kokuro was quickly liberated, and that was when reinforcements began arriving. When invaded, Japanese divisions are given 30% more speed to rush down to contain a naval invasion. Along with the buffs the UK had in the previous video, which were toned down for both countries. After getting halted on the outskirts of Hiroshima and Osaka, the Marine Corps did another invasion to break the stalemate. This was a partial victory as the Marine Corps managed to make a breakthrough in the north but failed to take Osaka in the south. Supplies issues meant that an attack on Osaka was pretty much doomed to fail. This would result in the 7th and 8th Marines being cut off and destroyed. It wasn't all lost as everything south and west of Osaka was taken, including the holdouts at Hiroshima. With amphibious tanks and Amtraks in production, the Marines were able to get more firepower. A breakthrough north of Osaka would be created as many of the militia to defend the home islands decided to go to the lost cause of fighting in Japan. The Marines encircled Osaka and Kyoto and made a rush to get as much land as possible with the infantry securing the flanks. The road to Tokyo looked wide open until a death stack was found on Yokohama, which stopped a rush into Japan. After some extremely bloody fighting, Osaka would fall. This meant that the Marine Corps would be able to do another bold plan. Take Tokyo and a straight to Hokkaido, preventing a retreat there. Both Warplan Orange and the Japanese Cypher would be used to make this the decisive blow against the Japanese. A funny thing I haven't mentioned yet is that in the version of the mod I played, every single tile of Japanese core ter territory had to be taken. This has been changed to where you no longer need South Sakhalin or the Krill Islands, but hey, that is how the Japanese was theorized to fight, right? With the successful landing at the crossing, there was no escape for the Japanese, and the UK would kill steal the final encirclement as I doubt that they got 1.3 million casualties on the Japanese before it. With the landings at South Sakhalin, the Japanese would no longer have any more land to fight that isn't occupied, so the war in the east was now over and it was time to bring the marines to Europe. In the span of six days, the people at Sicily would swap from eating pasta to burgers as the marine corps swept through the island. They also did manage to cross the strait into mainland Italy but would soon get halted as the supply lines were stretched to their limits. This meant that the marines would try to capture the entire west coast of Italy for the most part. Successful landings would be made in every landing zone and the marines moved to cut Italy in half, encircling the south. The liberation of Italy was a lot quicker than expected as what usually happens to me is what happened in real life. Germans garrisoned at mountains would hold a line to halt the allies for as long as possible. This didn't happen. The Germans didn't spare much and what they did give would be encircled as the Marine Corps punched through in the north. The Axis miners would try to play fireman to clean up the mess, but they too would get demolished. The infantry would be moved to secure the Marines flanks as the Marines continued to push for as long as possible. Surprisingly, Italy took a long time for their country to explode. Many major cities still had to fall. An encirclement in Florence helped further weaken the north for troops to eventually push into Milan and Venice, while in the south Naples would be occupied. This would finally result in the Italians fracturing, further weakening the soft underbelly of Europe. With Italy secured, it was time to liberate France. 
the marines would make a landing in Normandy quickly followed by the armored corps and a couple armies of infantry. The landing on all ports but Dieppe proved to be a challenge, but without using force attack the ports were still liberated. The Soviets and possibly the strategic bombing weakened the Germans to the point where the landings in Normandy proved to be the final nail in the coffin. The Eastern Front collapsed for the Germans as the Soviets were marching to Berlin. The push into Germany went quite smoothly for the most part, with it only really slowing down once the fighting started taking place in the Alps. Not seen was Denmark liberating itself from the Germans and joining Comintern, which I thought was a neat feature. But I then learned the reason Denmark joined Comintern was because the UK said no to helping their resistance. So another L for the UK. With fighting in Austria getting closer to Vienna and continued strategic bombing, the Germans finally surrendered, ending World War II. Thanks for watching, I will have less time for videos as winter break for college is now over, so the videos might be less ambitious from this point. Either way, be sure to like and subscribe, you know the deal, and this is Jonathan800 signing out.